on this Wednesday. Who's joining? Jennifer's in first. Jennifer, welcome to the program. Angie, I haven't responded to you yet. It's still afternoon somewhere, Angie. Dana's with us. Kitty. How is Kitty today? Hello, Adele. Catherine, cheers. Pasadena's in the house early, even. Crystal is having a plum of a day. Hey, Pat, how are you? Pat, I was just going through some photos, and I found, uh, because I was talking about a, a store uh, that was on the bus tour in Ohio, and there you were in the store in one of my photos. So uh, just saying there. So I just saw you a little while ago. Bonnie and Parker in the house. Welcome. Michelle in Southeast Virginia. Marsha, Marsha Schomburg, how are you? Love the sign, Marsha, thank you. Love it, I'm sure your customers love it. Cheryl's with us. Jeff Dodds, Orlando is in the house. Barb is in the house. Sue is with us. You know, Sue, I was so confused there for a second. I thought you were there, joining us from South Dakota and California. I think that's San Diego. That's one of those S cities that I get confused with in uh, California. Kelly's with us from Albuquerque. Angie's joining us. So glad to have you all with us tonight. What's everybody grateful for tonight? It is a Wednesday night. It is home day. What are we all grateful for? Hey, Nancy, thanks for joining us. What's everybody grateful for on this home day? Tell me all about it. Hey, Julie Jankowitz, welcome to the program. Nancy's with us. Hey, Nancy. That sounds like a good plan, uh, Kelly, but it's exciting to be getting ready for 20% occupancy. Hey, Michelle, that's a topic tonight. We're going to talk about that some more tonight on the comeback letters. Uh, Bailey's with it. With her best live video ever. Hey, Rose, good to have you with us. Hey, Russell Levy does exist. I thought he was just ignoring me. Hey, Leanne in Atlanta. Cheers. Ah, Russell, you've been so busy with Julie. That's what it is, since Julie is thankful for you. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a pass if you're taking care of my friend Julie. And Angie's, who has been helping? Well, that's good. If Angie's been busy with Julie, then Angie has noticed that I haven't called her back yet from this afternoon. But it is still afternoon somewhere, Angie. Still afternoon somewhere. And we've got a lot of pink out there tonight. Hang on, I'm going to give you guys my, if I can do this right. Hang on, let me see. Let me see how talented I am. Can you see the, the, the pink of our sunset out here tonight? Got lots of nice pink there. Now can I get it back? There you go, Russell. You are. You are taking care of as many people, and we are grateful for that. And Alicia's got a big display window full of merchandise available online with signage. Shop Alicia's store. It's in California. Sylvia is calling us from Virginia tonight. Bonnie is grateful for her monkey. I mean, monkeys and hats. I thought she was talking about Park there for a second, keeping her monkeys in line. And Colleen and Richard, yes, a great affiliate there, monkeys and hats. Pat has customers telling them how 
Glad they are they're back and another good sales day. Wildfires there. I don't usually think of your area, Jennifer, as wildfires. When I get up into California and Oregon and everything, I, I think of wildfires. I'm sorry you had that there today in Florida, but uh, we didn't have Florida warmth today. But tomorrow, by the weekend, I think we're supposed to be in the mid-70s here, uh, which would be put everybody in a good mood or a hopeful mood, hopefully. You know, the world here is still closed up north. Uh, Connecticut, where we live, is supposed to start opening up next week, but uh, Massachusetts is still uh, not uh, talking. Hey, the Acostas are joining us tonight. Hello, Acostas, joining us live. It's great to have you all uh, with us tonight. I'm excited to uh, have that. You know, we should do something every day that makes your future self will thank you for. Happy hump day, Karen. You got it. You got the right attitude. I, you know, it's nice to start, uh, though, still having staff in the stores. Even had a new employee start today. Let's call her something with an L. Lauren. Lauren is our new... See, there you go. Cassandra knew, the peanut gallery knew what the new employee's name was. How about that? Started today. First day on the job. It was exciting. I didn't meet her, but she's showed up. Supposedly she did some work. It's exciting! <laughs> hey, Sarah, good to have you with us. Every night, every night, every night. Did you meet Lauren, Lauren today? No, you were home. Okay, well, Cassandra noticed there was a Lauren, and she didn't remember a Lauren before. And she's better with names than I am, so let's just go with that. Huh? She's your new hire. <laughs> Supposedly she had a good first day. Awesome. awesome. All right, everybody. We start every night with the peanut gallery, with the good morning, good night book. With the good morning, good night book is how we start the show every night. We've opened to a random page. Oh, whoa, that's a busy random page. But let's go with it. I like it. I like it. The Johnsons are joining us. I like that, too. Kitty's two new employees are great. Good morning. Allow for the possibility that the best of you is still inside you. Waiting to emerge. Prepare the way. Bit by bit. Boom. What a good morning. There's a new fixture up here on my mantle. I don't know that it works for me. It's screwing up my flow here. Did Nana redo the mantle? Okay, there's a new, there's something new on my mantle. It's of where I leave things here, guys, for my lives. I'm not, I'm not Melissa. I don't have a joystick. Hang on. So, hey, Diane, great to have you with us. Amy Abrams, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? How has your nurse been? He's been posting things that, that he has been the best caregiver ever. We hope Eric has been uh, uh, taking good care of you. Um, I've heard that he's not going to make it and his career in nursing is, is going to be short-lived, but uh, I hope you are recuperating well. And glad to have you with us. Okay, we have got a lot to cover tonight. There is a lot in my pile here tonight. So many things. Where or where to begin? Because I did not... My day was not so free that I had time to organize all this tonight, but we will get through it. I'm going to save that for our closing. Boom. Walmart's going to give employees another cash bonus. Walmart is going to spend close to a billion dollars, 935 million to be exact, um, with a second cash bonus. Uh, well, actually, no, this bring... Oh, that's great, Russell. I'm glad to hear that your new support tech is looking to be very promising. Tell us his name so we can welcome him. 
Okay, so this is actually bringing their total payouts to almost a billion dollars, including their previous bonuses that they've given. So they will be given uh, bonuses in the amount of $300 for full-time hourly employees and $150 for part-time hourly employees and temporary employees. Okay, uh, associates must be employed by the company as of June 5th to qualify for the bonus, and the bonus will be pay out on June 25th. Oh, that's awesome. So now we can really call Oz, Russell, for the solution to our problems? <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> we can go see the almighty, all-powerful Oz. Joni! Good to have you with us. Hey, Alexa. Sheila, that is great that the first 10 days have been uh, good. I think your husband ignored me today when I tried to call him. I think he sent me to voicemail. I left a message. If that was your husband, Sheila, that is who I uh, did leave a message for. All right. Um, hey, Nikki, how are you? All the guys and all the all the software vendors. I mean, I don't want to give you know Russell's on tonight, so we got to toot Russell's horn and and the resale world team like you are, Kitty, because they have been invaluable. But all the software providers have been unbelievable. The guys at Traxia, the uh, folks at Ricochet have been just doing phenomenal work. Uh, Consign Pro, SBS, all the Nart's affiliate software providers have been. Really, really stepping it up, getting people online, helping people with technology that they never thought they would use. Okay, I mean, just look at all the stores that have gone online recently. Did anybody see uh, Nart's board, longtime board member, the person who bought um, Kate um, Kate's store, Chris Swanson? Okay, her new online website, uh, fabulous, uh, designed by Angie Hulus. At Angie K. Um, I mean, just all the affiliates of NARTS have totally been stepping up because, again, they're letting everybody know that you're not alone running this store. <laughs> uh, I am thrilled to hear, Amy, that you are doing really well and on the mend um, and that Eric's been wonderful for the most part but shouldn't quit his day, day job. Hey, Ashley, how you doing? Okay, does anyone know a Czech billionaire? Um, well, he bought 5% of Macy's this week. A Czech billionaire who also happens to be a professional soccer team owner. And, um, one of the largest energy companies, he also heads up one of the largest energy cup companies in Europe. And has stakes in French newspaper Le Monde and Metro AG and a large German food service company. He has bought into Macy's so that he could engage in constructive discussions with management and the board of directors. Okay, 5% buys you constructive talks, or at least that's what he's hoping. Do, 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 do. This was an interesting uh, report today on, um, hey, Sarah, that's awesome that you got your Idol portal. That means you can play American Idol. Krita's with us. How are you, Krita? Two days, at, two business days, three on the outset, Sarah, of you completing every, all the steps of the portal. You, you zip through all the steps of the portal, and in two to three days, you will have you will wake up to money in your account. Um, uh, I promise you that it, it is a it is a wonderful uh, thing to wake up to. I love getting the emails from people that tell me, "Oh my God, I woke up to money in the bank." <laughs> oh, Michelle. You're going for 10%. I love it. Ann in Virginia. Welcome to the program. So this was an interesting article. Of all the issues you face 
And I do not think it will be tested on us because we care, because we have the better ability to adapt when facing adversity. But uh, reopening businesses face thorny customer facing issues. Uh, regarding the ADA. Hey, Krita, that is awesome news. It is Portal Day. It is Portal. And no, I'm not talking about Facebook. I'm talking about American Idol. And Krita's husband could sing on America Idol. He could certainly tell some jokes on it. So um, that is awesome. I'm glad to hear that, Krita. That is very good news. As soon as you complete that, you go through all the steps, like I just covered with Sarah. You go through all those steps, Krita. Two days, three on the outside... Um, you will get it. Uh, Jenny, go to the narts.org slash resale, um, strong page, and you will see what the portal email looks like. There is a, an example of it right there. It tells you what to do. You don't get it until you get to the next step in the idol, and you're not a farmer, so you're not getting that yet. But the idol will be reopening for non-farmers. The idol will be reopening. I was on a call with the... Uh, he's like fifth down or sixth down at, at the SBA today um, and uh, talked about it. So it will be reopening. I don't have a date for you yet, but it will. But I will let you know as soon as it does. So again, ADA issues um, regarding the um, reopening. You won't miss your portal email. Nor will you miss your, your, your check billionaire, Michelle. Okay. Because I hear he's into hybrid fashion. I'm at least in, living in farm country, Jenny. I, you know, I'm on four acres in some parts of the world. And, and I could be zoned. To, I'm zoned for horses. I'm zoned for horses where I am. Um... You know, with all the protections stores are putting up and barriers they're putting up, it does affect some ADA issues um, and uh, and uh, public accommodation, okay? So, to participate in the benefit in or benefit from goods and services. Um, because there's not a legitimate safety argument that can be made, um... It, it, it's very interesting. They're expecting some of the big guys to get sued depending on what measures they take and what measures they t uh, don't take. Um, yours is coming soon, Pat. I promise you. I've been watching it. Um, to providing access to their stores and making their stores and their cash areas and other things easily accessible. It's just interesting to note that that's going to be a side effect of it. I know in our environments... We're going to do everything we can to make our stores accessible to the people. Uh, for example, we have a, in our own uh, store that, hits our, that visits our home de decor store often, we have a woman in a wheelchair um, who, who rides a motorized wheelchair and comes in and uh, she's also mute. So, I mean, we, we go above and beyond anyway. She doesn't sign for her payout. She doesn't ha you know everybody knows who she is and talks to her and smiles with her and and we do so much but but that's the kind of service we're able to provide in our types of environments so we're not going to get hit with those but it's just something to be aware of um that is on the radar uh da -da -da, the ppp because it wouldn't be a hump day without talking about the ppp Okay, there's a lot to talk about here today, I guess. Um, hang on a second. Let me just make sure I got it all. That's... That's awesome, Sarah, that you do that for your, for your deaf consigner. Uh, hey, Frank, thanks for joining us in New Jersey. You know, I hear, Frank, New Jersey and you are perfect together. Okay. So, uh, the PPP, a few things happening today. First of all, because there's been a lot of BS going around the internet about how you're going to be means tested and things when the PPP goes for forgiveness and your PPP is going to be revoked and you're going to owe all this money and there's 
all this fear going around the internet. Okay. Cheers to you, Suzanne and MJ. Good to have you with us. I mean, the the fear ha that that some people are trying to spread. It's easy to sell fear. It is a not something that we deal with here. We deal with the truth. Okay, and so to deal with the fear that's going around the internet, the uh, Treasury and the SBA came out with a couple of notes today. First of all, businesses that obtain PPP loans under $2 million will not be audited. Will not be audited. PPP loans under $2 million will not be audited per Treasury. Okay, um, the good faith certification requiring the necessity of the loan. Okay, Alexa, if you don't have the PPP from them this week, I want you to go find somebody else. I want you to go knock on another bank because uh, according to my buddy who's like, I don't know, my new buddy who's like fifth or seventh down at the SBA, they keep on, I started at the top. <laughs> with Jovita, and they keep on moving me down, okay? Uh, uh, but that's okay, because these people listen, and they, they, they make things happen, so I'm okay. I don't, need, I don't need to talk to the top. I just need to talk to people that make things happen. So there is plenty of money. If you haven't gotten a PPP, there is still, surprisingly, a huge amount of money left, okay? There is 120 or so billion left as of uh, my call this morning. Okay, um, and so there is plenty of money left. So I want uh, you, if you don't, if Wells Fargo doesn't get off the pot this week, I, I want you with somebody else and, and that, that is going to care about Alexa as much as I care about Alexa. Although I'm a little nervous tomorrow. We're, Alexa, we're going to an underground dog groomer tomorrow because dog, I, my mother-in-law is taking the dogs. Tomorrow, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I may have to drive to Texas for you to fix it. Okay, so, and, and as part of that, so PPPs under $2 million will not be audited. And uh, the whole good faith certification is, like I have said, okay, they clarified it in writing, okay, that they're looking for good faith certifications, okay, that they're going to audit from really public companies. So companies that are publicly traded companies is where they're going to deal that, that um, side of it. So uh, keep that in mind. Okay, hang on a second. I just got to re keep my stuff in order here. While we are dealing with the uh, PPP, we have to deal with returning employees. So returning employees has been a question and it's already been mentioned, but what do I, look what I got. I have the certified mail forms to go out with my letters um, to the employees. I'm giving, uh, you know, I met with uh, key members of my management today and uh, talked about, uh, you know, the people that haven't um, committed to coming back yet or getting on the schedule. And uh, we're giving them one last chance to get on the schedule or they're going to get the, the letter. Um, is going out, and that letter is available at narts.org slash resale strong. Narts.org slash resale strong. Excuse me, that letter is available to you um, to send out. Okay, what happens if they don't come back is the question. There's been a big question today. So do you just get to count their FTE hours? What happens? Um with that equation if if they do not return and they were offered the job they actually reduce just straight out reduce your FTEs so if you had 5 FTEs okay and 2 decide not to come back so now you have 3 FTEs you are not on the hook for those 2 FTEs anymore for hitting your forgiveness uh equation okay so if you had to hit 5 Okay, to decide they're not returning and you've served them a legitimate offer to return. Okay, and they choose not to, even if they don't return the, the letter saying they're not coming back, then you are off the hook for that. How do you get them on a schedule without a start date? Well, it, you know, you need to give them a return date or return to payroll date, Edwin. 
In Massachusetts, you can have three people in the building in a closed building. So you, under the governor's revised order in Massachusetts, you can have three people on a shift um, a, a, in a building at once. And we have been doing that, uh, or well, let me rephrase that, we've started that. Molly, I would. It, re it reduces your count. It takes care of the problem. Okay, so it does take care of the problem. So, yeah, Edwin, we've been working on getting the stores ready, getting merchandise ready for when we can reopen. I still expect it to be phase two, like we talked about last night. But uh, you can have th up to three people in the building at a time. Or you can be paying people to stay home if you need to spend down your PPP. The other side of it... Um, so that is that side. Um, but the other part of that, so... Uh, I think the updated guidance that I don't have yet, Jeff, will be okay for that. I actually think if they come back before June 30th, you're going to be okay, but we don't have final guidance on that. I expect updated guidance next week. Okay, because of the negotiations that are going on in between Congress and the Treasury and the House, the Senate, everybody, I expect there to be some revisions in the forgiveness guidance that will be published next week as part of that. It's subtracted from your adjusted goal. So if your base period, if you're using the period... Um, it doesn't reduce your initial population. It reduces your, your goal that you're trying to meet. Either the, where's my numbers here because I always want to screw up the dates. Hang on a second. I want to make sure I say the right dates out loud here, Park. Okay, the two date periods are, for forgiveness, are either February 15th, 2019 to June 30th, 2019, or January 1st, 2020 to February 29th, 2020. Uh, and either either period that you're using, whichever is the greatest to your benefit, okay, um, it comes off that. So if you calculated those the FTEs during one of those periods, which is not your initial population, okay, because your population was based on 2019 payroll, and you calculate those periods, and you don't need them, it comes right off. Well, then don't invite them back, Molly. I mean, if you, if you don't need them to hit it, and um, but if they were going to say no, I would take it and, um, and have it drop off your count. Everything's always complicated in Steamboat. I love you, Molly, but Steamboat a, is a complicated town. I, I do love Steamboat, though. And, and look forward to happier times when I get to come back and see the new store. Um, th but the the key here, that lets you off the FTE calculation. Okay, so that lets you off the FTE calculation. So back to, back to my key point here. That reduces your PPP calculation. But that does not, that does not reduce the spend. You still need to spend this money in the eight weeks. So keep that in mind. You have to have a way of spending that, whether that's your bonusing people, giving people raises, permanent raises. Um, it totally helps the FTE count. And, and that doesn't prohibit you if they say no, okay, that doesn't prohibit you should they apply at a future date that doesn't prohibit you from rehiring, okay, a, a said individual, okay? In my own circumstance and just my own feelings on the issue, okay, and I don't want to cloud it with too much with that, but people that are only trying to milk the 600 and, and want to come back and apply on August 1st, I have very little... Um, compassion for okay okay and looking to rehire them even if they were a good employee when they worked okay but somebody that was doing something that had a reason that they needed to care for their kid or something but isn't coming back right now but 
July 1st wants to come back or something, I might have more compassion for. That wasn't the the whole goal of milking the $600 and thinking they could find a job uh, and we would be desperate for them. I, ha I have very uh, little uh, compassion for that. Um... Hang on a second, Nancy. I'm trying to see if I'm missing something in your math. I'm confused on your actual question, Nancy, but email me, Nancy. Message me. I'll, I'll help you with your math to make sure you're hitting your numbers. I'm not going to let uh, you and Don not hit your numbers, so don't worry. I will, I will make sure you and Don hit your numbers. Yeah, I don't see myself... You know, there, 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 there's always that story that they, they were known now because they had to care for somebody or they had some special, truly special circumstance. And I can't, you know, I, I don't want to dice out all the specifics of that, but the 20-something-year-old the that's like, Woohoo, I'm getting that extra 600, I'm taking it until the day it stops, then they are going to beg to have me back. I don't beg for nothing people. I don't beg for nothing, you know? That just doesn't happen. I don't beg for people to work. I would rather do it. My people would rather do it. My people respect me better for that. Um, and uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not doing that. So that is the way uh, Neil rolls. Uh, you remember, you're the governor of you. Okay, and you're the governor of your store. Just don't be held hostage to somebody. Okay, you've got a company to run, a company that depends on you. You are a community-based business. Okay, the whole community depends on you. All those consigners depend on you for their needs. Everybody depends on you. This is big girl panty time, people. I am putting on mine. You put on yours. We will get to the other side of this. Okay, this is about making the tough decisions for the company. That is correct. The uh, unemployment and the extra $600 goes away. It says so right in the letter. What did I say about auditing the PPP? Suzanne, since I know your numbers, okay, and I know MJ's numbers, you don't have anything to worry about. You did not get a PPP of more than $2 million. You will not be audited, okay? <laughs> you will not be audited, Suzanne and MJ. They, the government... And, and even a better chance of why you won't be audited, Suzanne and MJ, the government's too cheap to spend the $18 to cross the t toll bridge to come and audit you. <laughs> that is correct, Bonnie. You have a fiduciary duty to the Department of Labor to report that. And that is correct, Jennifer. If it was easy, everybody would do this, okay? Everybody. <laughs> okay, hopefully, Susanna, I didn't make you spit out your wine laughing when I said that. <laughs> um, this is not easy, but this is important stuff. And I had this discussion. I mean, that's I, I brought the letter to meet with my manager. Okay, managers today. I brought the letter, okay, and said, okay... Let's have the, okay, these people have already volunteered to come back and are already on a schedule. Who is it? Okay, so we had one who's a student who was, okay, uh, doing finals. So she's going to not, she hasn't been on the schedule yet, but she is on the schedule for the week after. Fine, she doesn't get a letter. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Um, you know, there, there are some other situations, but I said, okay, give everybody one last chance because this is happening, okay? I have this duty to the company. My job is to make sure that this company doesn't come out with this huge payment. Um, who was I? Was it the SBA guy I was talking to today? They're like, have, that, have you, you calculated what the payment would be? I said, yes, I've been calculating it for everybody what their payment would be, okay? And it's not pretty. There is not a form yet, Bonnie, on um, forgiveness. I expect it after Memorial Day. Okay, I I expect I expect that form will come out shortly after Memorial Day. 
I expect there to be another bill and a deal next week. Okay, you've heard lots of deals, and that's actually my next topic, as a matter of fact, is the HEROES Act, as the Democrats have called it. Okay, is that there will be a, another bill. I expect it to happen, them to get off their butts and agree by Memorial Day uh, on a new bill. And then, uh, as part of that, I expect the uh, changes that Congress has been pushing for Treasury to say, okay, well, you guys agreed, so Mnuchin will change the rules. And, and that's what we're waiting on, my buddy Steve, to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, it's interesting when you're on Steve's desk, so we're going to skip over being on Steve's desk. Jennifer, how do you report? Uh, Jennifer, Florida is really hard right now. You're going to have to do some stuff. Message me and I'll try to take a look and see if I can find something. But Florida is so screwed up, nobody's able to collect anyway. So uh, we will uh, work on that for you. But, but keep in mind, even if they collect, post this, okay? Even if somebody collects... The Department of, of Labor in your state has the ability to garnish wages, okay? It is right in the uh, agreement when you accept unemployment wages from the state, you give them the right to garnish overpayments, okay? They will first offer to give you an opportunity to repay it, and then they will automatically garnish your wages, okay? And it'll just be like child support, like you getting a child support payment on somebody, um, they will garnish the wages. They will get their money back. It may take them a little bit. It may not happen instantly with all that's happening in government right now. But the state will get their money. I can assure you of that. And uh, so, uh, and, and it will happen and they will be sad. Okay, they will, they will be sad when that happens. Most people don't know that the state can garnish wages uh, for unpaid uh, unemployment. So keep that in mind. That is correct, uh, Kelly. They have not developed the form, but it is coming. Uh, I certainly expect it before the end of the month. I, I really expect it right after Memorial Day because they're really waiting on this next bell uh, there. Hey, Christine, thanks for accusing me of hosting a party. I appreciate that. I am. I'm one of the cool kids. I'm hosting a party. Christine said so. Hey, Scott. Good to have you with us tonight. Um, so, yes, so, again, the HEROES Act um, is what's being proposed. Again, this is a wish list. I do not see this bill coming out the way it is. I covered this some last night. And, and the payment is a second mortgage, and not like the little second mortgage that you borrowed a little extra to do some home improvements on your house. This is like another mortgage payment. Another entire mortgage. Like you went and bought a vacation home. Told you you couldn't buy a boat. You can't buy a vacation home either with this. Okay, so the HEROES Act. Just a quick summary again. Um, provides nearly $1 trillion in state, local, territorial, and tribal governments who desperately need funds to pay vital workers. A HEROES Fund for Essential Workers establishes $200 billion HEROES Fund to ensure that essential workers who have risked their lives during the pandemic receive hazard pay. Testing, tracing, and treatment provides another $75 billion for coronavirus testing. Contact tracing and isolation measures ensures every American can access free coronavirus treatment and supports hospitals and providers. More direct payments cushions the economic blow of the coronavirus crisis with a second round of more substantial economic impact payments of $1,200 per family member, up to $6,000 per household. It includes children over 17, which is, um, and paying more for kids, which is what brings that $6,000 uh, higher. Protects payrolls, enhances the new employee retention tax credit that encourages employers to keep employees on pay payroll, allowing 60 million Americans to remain connected to their paychecks and benefits. Hey, Kirsty Roos, thanks for joining us. Worker safety requires OSHA to issue a strong enforceable standard within seven days to require all workplaces to develop and implement uh, infection control plans based on CDC expertise. 
uh, and prevents employers from retaliating against workers who report infection problems. Small business and nonprofit strengths and the PPP to ensure that it reaches underserved communities, nonprofits of all sizes and types and responds flexibly to small businesses by providing 10 billion for COVID-19 emergency grants through the idle uh, loan program preserves health care coverage for Americans losing their employer sponsored health insurance with COBRA subsidies to maintain their coverage extends unemployment benefits extends the weekly uh, $600 benefit till January. Housing assistance uh, helps struggling families afford a safe place to live with $175 billion in new supports to assist renters and homeowners make monthly payments. Food security addresses rising hunger with a 15% increase to the maximum SNAP benefit and safeguards for our democracy and election. Okay, so that is the wish list. That is not what's going to pass. But it is a step. It's a conversation piece. You'll hear about it all through the weekend. Next week, we will make real progress on what that is what that bill will actually be. This time next week, we will have a much clearer picture on it. Everything before then is just uh, a guess. Uh, let's see. Um, a consumer survey fielded by Prosper Insights and Analytics among nearly 10,000 U.S. adults uh, surveyed during the period May 1st through May 8th. 39% of consumers indicate they would feel comfortable shopping in stores again once their state, once their state says it is safe to do that. 69% of consumers say they depend on physical stores being open for their shopping needs and that of their family. That, again, speaks nicely. Okay, in the Neal survey. So, Neal survey of retail stores opening. Okay, so we've had stores opening. The pink calculator. The pink calculator tracks more stores numbers because numbers don't lie. People do. So, I have real numbers from real conversations um, with real store owners over the periods they've been open. Stores in general okay, across the board are averaging 65 to 75% of normal sales for this time of year. Those averages, so, so let's call it 70%, okay, let's drop it right in the middle and say stores are averaging 70% right in the middle, okay. Hey, Ellen, how are you? I miss you and Mike. Um... So let's say you're going to hit 70% of your numbers. That is not going to be a straight line. That is going to be a number over time. Okay? So over a week, over 10 days, over a month, okay, you are going to hit 70% on average of your sales in the initial opening weeks. But that has come with some huge highs and lows. And what I want to... What I mean by that is some days you're like, I get 140% of what I would normally do on a Tuesday. Woo! But on Wednesday, it's like a blizzard hit in Atlanta. Okay? Nothing's happening. Nothing. So it's huge highs and lows to average out at about between 65 and 75% for initial openings after a period of time, according to the Neil unofficial merchandise survey but i think uh you know that's a good number to work with and plan from just so that you have some things if you haven't opened up yet and just from planning but know that you're going to have some extremes it's certainly something i discussed with my managers today that we're going to have some of that um uh, yeah tourist town in south carolina are the exceptions uh, but uh i can't uh that those are tourist areas that rely on tourist traffic um, aren't there yet, but there's going to be a lot of stuff uh, to get uh, people back traveling. Thanks, Alexa. Please do keep me posted on that. Right, Dana. Exactly. Ghost town. But other days you're going crazy. I, I know I know just even from talking to you and, and seeing some of your posts, you're like, oh my God, 
it was insane, and then other days are just dead like Wednesdays have been dead for you. And there's no rhyme or reason for that, and it, it will work itself out. Bonnie, if I were a betting man to your question of when do I think they will make the FTE requirement, I think they will make it June 30th. I, I think they will make it as long as you have hit it by June 30th, you will be fine. If I were a betting man, based on all the conversations I have had, that the beginning won't matter, but the spend, the spend is going to matter. They have, that, that's been a disconnect. Okay, in all of this is the spend during the eight weeks um, still has to be spent during the eight weeks. And we, you, uh, me, Park have talked about that uh, extensively. So spend the money. Um, and I was a betting man when I was younger. I, well, I used to play the ponies. I grew up at Saratoga Racecourse. I, I, to show you what a betting man I am, Bonnie, I don't know if you've heard this story. Okay. But my, for my bar mitzvah, my father's best man at his wedding, okay, my father's best man was the head of off-track betting in New York State. And for my bar mitzvah, so what does every good 13-year-old Jewish boy need? A phone-a-bet account. Yes, that's what I got for my bar mitzvah. The head of OTB got me a phone-a-bet account. So I was all set when I didn't know money was real and everything else and I could gamble away. That is what my father's best man got every good 13-year-old boy. Uh, was a, a horse racing phone bet account. I used to spend every uh, August is the horse racing season in Saratoga. Um, and uh, I would spend, uh, I would get to my father's pharmacy early to get the racing form, get, would get delivered. Uh, because he would sell the, the papers in his pharmacy, and I would sit there with a calculator, and I would analyze the horses and find the betting. So that, I was more of a betting man when I was younger, um, but based on conversations here, and now that I've entertained you with that true story, um, I will uh, move on, but that is, that is true. Uh, let's see, what have I missed here? You got your first horse from Saratoga. That's great, Nancy. I did not know that. Well, these are true stories. I am not creative enough to make up the stories I tell. You have to keep that in mind. All the stories I tell are, are true, have happened. Uh, and, and I have my trifecta, too. I have my... my my mother was a spiritual to the numbers person. So, like, she always liked to play my uh, the first trifecta that I hit. Um, and, and one big that I couldn't go to the window and collect. I could get away with a lot of things, but I couldn't, uh, uh, do that. Yes, the worth of the big calculator. And, and I, uh, and I try to go, uh, uh, once a year up to the track, uh, because I, I enjoy the environment. I just, I find it very relaxing. And I like the, the, uh, the run for the, uh, horses. I just didn't, I enjoy it. It brings back a lot of memories. Uh, for me. So with that, every night I am here live, live in the Nards Facebook group, private Facebook group, live at 8 o'clock Eastern every night. This video and all the videos that we have been hosting here repost to the YouTube channel. You're not alone running this store. The link to the channel, all the resources I quote here, are posted over to narts.org slash resale strong. Narts.org slash resale strong. Uh, um, uh oh, Fifi's ready for bed. Um, Fifi's looking for a place to lay down, crying here. If you have a question, if I haven't answered it, I am the easiest person in the world to reach, you just email me. Email me, Neil, Neil, N-E-I-L, at ECIStores.com. That is Neil, N-E-I-L, at ECIStores.com. Be sure to include your phone number because most of these emails require more than just a reply. They require a call from me. If you get a call or a FaceTime from a 508 number, that call, that call is coming from me. Answer it. Don't let it go to voicemail. 
Don't be like Sheila's husband and let it go to voicemail. Take the call. <sighs> All right. I will be back here again tomorrow. We start every day and night with the good morning, good night book. This good morning, good night book is how we start every day and night. Our good morning for those of you that were not here at the top of the program. Perhaps the way. Prepare the way, bit by bit. Our good night tonight is good night. Allow for the possibility, the possibility that the best stuff is still ahead of you, waiting to reveal itself. Prepare the way, bit by bit. Look at the graphic tonight, a puzzle, a puzzle, people. We're going to make it to the other side. We are one day closer to the end of all this, one day closer. I promise you that. I'll be back here again tomorrow night at 8 Eastern. I do like a good party. I like a wedding. I like a bar mitzvah. I like a good time. But until then, you will find me here again tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern. Because you, and you, and especially you, are not alone running this store. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a great night. It's dinner time.